The Lord be with you. Yesterday was a fun day here. We had two weddings. So, um, and it looks like everything is fairly well cleaned up. Our theme today is hunger for ministry. And uh, we're going to look at the story of Zacchaeus and see what that means for us. We're also rather than the psalm, going to have a, lit, a litany for graduation, for graduates. Let's begin our worship prepare, by preparing our hearts through the brief order of confession and forgiveness on page three. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And this is love. <clears throat> Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. Gracious and glorious God, you have chosen us as your own, and by the powerful name of Christ, you protect us from evil. By your spirit, transform us and your beloved world, that we may find your joy, our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
a reading from Acts. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He'd been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thank you. A litany for graduation. O God of all life, in their baptism you blessed our sons and daughters with your spirit, promised your aid, and called them into discipleship for this everlasting blessing. We pray now for those entering new lives after graduation, praising you for their gifts and asking you for their continued blessing for what you have given and what you shall give. For those graduating into lives of full employment, lead them to work that honors you, benefits the world's need, and emboldens, ennobles their own souls. God of daily labor, for those continuing their study, as their knowledge grows, increase also its wise and loving use that they too might serve you through, the, through their learning. God of all truth and understanding, for those who have yet to perceive where life may turn next, grant them patience with the struggle, hope for the future, and confidence that you will guide them well. God of hope, protect our graduates from any enticement that may tempt and lead to harm. Help them, keep them from the cynicism and despair that may follow disappointment and failure. Embrace mistakes with repentance and misfortunes with restoration. Always making clear your word of constant and abundant love. God of mercy. Help parents and others who share concern for the dangers and decisions that will be faced beyond their caring eyes. Reassure them where they have done their best and heal their regrets as they entrust their sons and daughters to your care. God of grace. We, com we commend our graduating sisters and brothers to you, O God, by your unceasing spirit. May their baptismal light so shine before others that they may see their good works and glorify you in heaven and on earth. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Think of us in this way, as servants of Christ and steward of God's mercies. Moreover, it's required as stewards that they be found trustworthy. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. I don't even judge myself. I'm not aware of anything against myself, but I'm not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. 
Then each one will receive commendation from God. I have applied all of this to Apollos and myself for your benefit, brothers and sisters, so that you may learn through us the meaning of the saying, nothing beyond what is written so that none of you will be puffed up in favor of one or against another. For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you received it, why do you boast as if it were not a gift? Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Quite apart from us, you have become kings. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we might be kings with you. For I think that God has exhibited us apostles as last of all, as those sentenced to death, because we have become a spectacle to the world, to angels and to mortals. We are fools for the sake of Christ, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. To the present hour, we are hungry and thirsty, we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless, and we grow weary from the work of our own hands. When we reviled, we bless. When persecuted, we endure. When slandered, we speak kindly. We have become like the rubbish of the world, the dregs of all things to this very day. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, Half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I would like to invite the young people to come up. You know what? Uh, when I made that invitation, I used to say, I would like to invite the little people to come up. And we had a little guy in our congregation by the name of Patrick, who was shorter than everybody else. And he came up to me and said, hey, who are you calling little? <laughs> so now I say young people. I hope that doesn't offend anybody. We just heard a story about a little person, Zacchaeus, right? How many know this Zacchaeus song? 
Okay, well, we'll try to sing it. Repeat after me. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree. For the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior came that way, He looked up in the tree, and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down from there. For I'm going to your house today. Very good. You did pretty well. Isn't that a great story about Zacchaeus? Zacchaeus met Jesus, and his life changed. He said, I'm going to give half of what I own to the poor. And if I ever wronged someone, if I ever defrauded someone, I will restore it fourfold. Isn't that incredible? All because he met Jesus. Well, we have met Jesus. And our lives can never be the same. Okay? In fact, that's why we do good. Because we have met Jesus. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God. We thank you for Zacchaeus. We thank you even more for Jesus. We're thankful we belong to him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If any of you have ever taken a course in psychology, you heard of Abraham Maslow. Maslow developed, uh, his claim to fame was uh, uh, his whole concept on what motivates human beings. And of course, his hierarchy of needs. And they are physiological. I'm going to let Luke uh, click the pictures, which of course would be hunger, thirst, shelter, sex, safety, security, protection from physical and emotional harm, social, affection, belonging, acceptance, friendship, esteem, also called ego, And self-actualization, finally, when all those other needs are met, we can get into self-actualization and we can actually do things. Well, before Abraham Maslow came along, Jesus came along. And if you remember what Jesus said, the first thing he said when he started preaching was, repent. For the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the gospel. Because, and, and when Jesus said that, because he was introducing the kingdom to us, because he was inviting people to come and belong to the kingdom, everything changed. In Jesus, our needs are met. If we look at the story of Zacchaeus, now 
Now, wasn't he a mess? Now, Maslow, he fits perfectly into Maslow's hierarchy of needs because it seems like none of his needs were being met, were they? He was short in stature, seemed like he felt like a nobody, so he had to climb that sycamore tree in order for Jesus to see him. When Jesus calls him out and says, come on down, I'm going to your house, we see that he had no social life. Everyone called him a sinner. It's Jesus, look, how can he go to the house of a sinner? And when he met Jesus, and, and we can see that all of his needs for security were being met because the reason people thought he was a sinner was his collection of taxes and possibly um, the improper collection of taxes. But when he meets Jesus, all those needs for security are met. And he says, you know, Jesus, I don't need half of what I have. I'm going to give it to the poor. And if I have ever defrauded anyone, I'm going to repay them fourfold. When Zacchaeus met Jesus, what did Jesus say? The kingdom of God has come to this house. But because of Jesus, our needs are met. The kingdom of God has come to this house. What is our motivation then for doing ministry? Our hunger, if you will. Our hunger is that because God's kingdom has come to us, we must share it with others. Howard Hendricks is a professor at Dallas Seminary. And he said, I'm a Christian today. I'm a follower of Christ because of a man by the name of Walt. Walt was a young man, had a heart condition, and he had a health scare, a death scare, actually. And when he recuperated, it was, it was his faith, the fact that he was a child of God, that he belonged to God's kingdom, that helped him through that struggle with his health. So he said, I've got to do something. So he went to the Sunday school superintendent, and he said, I want to teach a Sunday school class. And you know what the superintendent says? Too bad we have no place for you. But Walt was persistent and kept coming back and saying, I want to teach a Sunday school class. I don't know what it was about Walt that the Sunday school superintendent didn't want Walt to teach a class. So the superintendent says, Walt, you want to teach a class? You go out and find the students. So Walt went out in the streets of Portland, Oregon to find students. And he'd go up to kids and say, hey, do you want to come to Sunday school? And they all said, no. <laughs> so, so here is um, Howard Hendricks. He says, my parents abandoned me and I was being raised by my grandmother who was a loving person and my grandfather who was an alcoholic and I was I spent my days on the street never went home and here this guy by the name of Walt says hey can I play marbles with you he said, he first asked me to Sunday school, and I said, no. So he said, hey, can I play marbles with you? He said, we played marbles, and he said, the guy was good. He beat me every time, and thankfully, he didn't take my marbles. He said, I was the first one in his Sunday school class. 
And Walt kept trying. And finally, Walt had 13 young men from the streets in his Sunday school. He said nine of them came from broken homes. Eleven of the 13 went into full-time ministry. And he said, here I am teaching at a theological seminary all because of a guy by the name of Walt who understood the kingdom of God that Jesus had broken in on us bringing God's kingdom. Well, we, a few years ago, getting close to 10 years ago now, developed some imagine statements. And they're really, and, and I believe Jesus and his kingdom is the motivation for everything we do. And they were, it's even the, the motivation for those imagined statements. In fact, I believe they should be, we, we could use the, actually use them as a creed rather than say, imagine. We could say, and maybe we should say, we believe. We believe in a place open and inviting to all, welcoming those in need, and searching for the Word of God. Don't you believe in a place like that? It's what God's kingdom is, a place open and inviting to all. We believe in that place. We believe in a community of disciples guided by the Spirit, learning to know the Lord, studying the Word, and sharing the good news. We believe in a laity and staff set free, caring and authentic, hungry for ministry, discovering their gifts, alert to the opportunities around them. We believe in an excited youth, growing, learning, committed, filled with the possibilities of living life guided by the gospel. Why do we say we believe in that? Because that's a picture of God's kingdom among us. We believe in a congregation renewed and renewing, sustained by prayer, equipped through worship, alive to the Spirit, seeing Christ in every face with all the right resources necessary for growing ministries. And we believe in wounds being healed, the lost being found, the hungry being fed, hope replacing despair, and lives being changed. Why do we do what we do? It's because of who we believe in and what we believe in. We believe in Messiah Lutheran Church and the one who called it together and how we are trying to form a little piece of God's kingdom in this place. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And that's why we knit prayer shawls. It's because we believe in Christ and his kingdom. And those prayer shawls, as people wear them when they're ill, they can be reminded of God and his kingdom. The prayers that are being offered, the presence and warmth of Almighty God, because we believe what we believe, that we operate a child and family development center, praying that families and children's lives will be transformed. 
to believe. We can list all kinds of things we do, can't we? That's why we welcome all to worship. Welcome all to worship so people can be a part of a little bit of God's kingdom right here on earth among us. So we're to have a hunger for ministry. And that hunger comes from knowing and being a part of and understanding God's kingdom. Amen.
we confess our faith. Confident that the resurrection of Christ has defeated sin and death, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. Gracious Savior, you gave to your church the new commandment to love one another. Empower us with your spirit that we may truly be motivated by your love Walk in your way of the cross with such courage and compassion that everyone will know that we are your disciples. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Holy, immortal one, you absorbed the injustice, evil, and violence of every power and principality in your glorification upon the cross. Empower those who work for reconciliation and peace that everyone exercising a position of authority in the world may share in your work of healing and reunion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Healer of bodies and souls, we bring you our prayers of intercession and supplication for those we love. We remember especially John Burke, Gary Coffey, Mary Lou Cordero, Cliff Dykeman, Dennis Edwards, Judy Elliott, Jackson Gilbert, Dustin Jones, Jim Lampy, Scotty Inman, Sally Hollingshad, Ellen Lassant, Alan Malcolm, Verdeen Miller, Jeff Morris, Derwin Murphy, Sherry Palermo, Ruth Pipcorn, John Reynolds, Jan Snaff, Wayne Sproul, John Umland, and Edward Wood. Are there any others? We lift our words of thanksgiving and praise to you. We give special thanks for Ashley and Roger Payne and Brooklyn and Jacob Beckham. We pray that you have your love. Bind them together. We commend to your cross and resurrection those who have died. Comfort those who mourn. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Gracious God, we remember before you those completing their studies this academic year, for those who travel for recreation and for need, and for those gathered here and those absent. Wherever we may be, may we through our joy, continually offer you thanks, O God. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Holy God, by the death and resurrection of your Son, you have granted new life, abundant renewal, and salvation. Hear our prayers for the sake of the one who has set us free, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to have a temple talk. Michael, Michael Holman is going to give that for us. Good morning. For, the, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Michael Holman, and I am vice president of the congregation, and I'm also serving on, the, on this rock committee. 
As you're aware, over the last several weeks and for a few weeks to come, we're going to be emphasizing the various mission strands of our mission statement here at Messiah. And our mission strand for today is to hunger for ministry. Now, as I look at our mission statement across our stained glass, I see that many of those are just very apparent to me what they mean. They're, they're very clear in their meaning and intent, but hunger for ministry. I've always kind of struggled with what that meant. And uh, I think that we need to examine what it means to hunger for ministry. In Christianity, ministry is an activity carried out by Christians to spread or express their faith. The Great Commission of Christianity originates in the instruction of the, re of the resurrected Jesus Christ to his disciples that they spread the teaching of Jesus Christ throughout all the nations of the world. So what does this mean for us here at Messiah Lutheran Church? It means that we can't just be satisfied to be Christians here at church. We have to take, we have to take our faith out into the world. And certainly we do this on a regular basis. Many of our members are actively involved in community ministries such as cross lines and other ministries of the councils of churches that offer help to those in need. We have members that volunteer at the kitchen and help provide support for the homeless and the working poor in our community. These ministries are direct reflections of the ministries of Jesus and our response to his direction that we should care for the poor. We go out to the, to the community and spread our faith by example and show the caring and compassion that is a part of our faith. Our Earth Care team, which was recently featured prominently in our observance of Earth Day, works diligently to educate us all in ways in which we can be good stewards of the Earth and our environment, gifts that God has given us. But just as important as our outreach into the community, we share and spread our faith by inviting members of our community into our church and to utilize our facilities. One has only to look at the weekly calendar of events here at Messiah to see how our church and our facilities are an integral part of our ability to carry out our ministries. Reviewing the church calendar for just this month shows that Boy Scouts and Cub Scouts meet here on a weekly basis. Narcotics Anonymous are hosted here weekly. Tops meets on a weekly basis. The National Guild of Piano Teachers was here earlier this month and the church has been used for recitals and concerts. This does not even take into account the various congregational committees, teams, and other ministries that utilize our facilities on an ongoing basis. Perhaps one of the largest and most visible uses of our facilities on an ongoing basis is the Messiah Lighthouse Child and Family Development Center. The mission of this, of this ministry is to provide quality care and education for children from birth through six years in a Christian environment with a focus on strengthening and empowering families through their holistic support. I had to read that because I dare not get that mission wrong. <laughs> in order to do this, the Lighthouse Center partners with many community agencies to support each child and each family. This center is recognized for its excellence as is evidenced by its reaccreditation by Missouri Accreditation. It is one of only 14 accredited centers in Greene County. There is a insert in your bulletin today that has a lot more information regarding the Lighthouse. The ministries I have mentioned as well as the numerous others that have been featured in past weeks and those that will be featured in upcoming weeks are only possible so long as we have the facilities sufficient to support them. That is why it is vitally important that you support our On This Rock campaign to your fullest extent possible. Please prayerfully consider your support, keeping in mind these and all the ministries of our congregation. Many would not be possible if we did not have these wonderful facilities and certainly our hunger for ministry could not be fulfilled. I hope you will take advantage of the opportunity to further acquaint yourself with these ministries in the weeks to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. 
big part of uh, hungering for ministry is actually doing things. Maslow says that once our needs are all met, we do things. It certainly was um, something that Zacchaeus did. Sometimes we think we need to know specifically what my spiritual gift is to do it. I'm going to go home this afternoon and clean the kitchen floor. I'm going to do it for two reasons. We have two dogs in the house now and they've been tracking in mud. And I wanted to do it yesterday, but I didn't have time. So a big part of all this are people, you, doing things. So we try to have every week opportunities for you to sign up to do things. So if there are opportunities out there to sign up, I don't like to clean the kitchen floor, but I do it. So sometimes you just do things. Enough said. Nothing specific. Please rise. Thank you, Mark. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We give you thanks for Jesus who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Thank the Lord. Tell everyone what God has done. life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love, Jesus, our risen Savior. As you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil, keep us in unity with all your people, and by your Spirit move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions, through Christ our Lord. I'm simply going to suggest you read your messenger. There is a change, one change in the messenger. The, uh, Manfred Brockman, the day he will be coming has changed from Tuesday to Wednesday. Lori? I realize and I will be gone next Sunday for a grandson's graduation and I had heard from Carla Schneider that would be Vanita and Saul Schneider's daughter who is an attorney in Berlin, Germany and she, after um, Saul died we did not have a memorial service because she wanted to be here and a few of you have been asking about when that might be coming up and so she's been working from Germany to do the arrangements because I won't be here, I wanted to announce that it is going to be on the 30th of May on Saturday. And that happens to be the anniversary of Vanita and Saul Schneider's, what would have been their 67th anniversary. So Carla wrote, um, forgive me for not writing individually. And then she um, will be sending this email out to, uh, if Pastor hasn't gotten it, he will get it tomorrow. And she said, with the help of people in Springfield area, the services will be at 9 a.m. with continental breakfast, sort of a continental breakfast here at Messiah Lutheran, 9 to 10 in the morning on the 30th. And then 10 o'clock, Pastor Dan will do the service. And 11 graveside service led by both Pastor Dan and Pastor Dave. Pastor Dan is at uh, Christ or First Christian Church in Mount Vernon, where Saul and Vanita attended in the last few years of their life. And then the grave site will be at the common reception. So some of you Just keep talking, you know, it'll work. <laughs> some of you who knew Saul from the choir or from evangelism committee, I think would want to know that that event will be Saturday morning, May 30th, and we'll hope to have you all here. That would be great uh, to see a nice uh, bunch of people. Thank you, Lori, for making that announcement. And we'll try to get details out to you about that. <clears throat> Coming from Germany, it might take a couple days for that email, don't you think? <laughs> Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace that sustains every breath we take. The love of God that gives us courage and strength. And the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit that fills our hearts with comfort and peace. Be with you and all those you care about, now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture you, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace, share the good news. Hallelujah. <laughs>